for Sanda Limited. The financial year end is 28 February 2021. Year end is 28 February 2021. Remember, the financial year is the period of 12 months. So if the year end is 28 February 2021, it means that the year started on the 1st of March 2020. 1st of March 2020. So the accounting period that we are dealing with in this activity, it starts on the 1st of March 2020 and the end is 28 February 2021. And the name of the business is Usanda Limited. Required 2.2.1. We are now doing the cash flow statement. This is cash flow statement. Calculate the following figures for the 2021 cash flow statement. We want to calculate income tax paid. So this calculation, uh, educators normally use different methods of calculating this, but the most uh, prepared method by myself is the one that we are going to use when we are calculating this. What I normally uh, emphasize to you students is that you should just have one formula in mind. That your SARS income tax at the beginning should be a plus and your SARS income tax at the end should be a minus. And that if you are asked about the type of the account, what type of an account is SARS income tax? SARS income tax is a liability under normal circumstances. But we do understand that in some instances your SARS will become an asset. So, but we are saying that the beginning should be a plus and the end must be a minus. If everything falls under liability, if the beginning is a liability, it should be a plus. In your question paper, you may see liability or they may decide not to write it under liability. They may just indicate it as CR, which stands for credit. And if it is a CR, it's still liability or your SARS may appear under trade and other payables. If it is payable, it is still uh, indicating that your SARS is what? Is a liability. So therefore, if your beginning is under liability, it will be plus, and if your end is under liability, it will be minus. So should it happen that your SARS is no longer under liability, your beginning is not under liability, it is under assets, or you see a DR sign, or it is recorded under receivables, then you need to change the sign. If it is a DR, what you need to do, you just need to change the sign. You just change the sign. So the DR, may, it, may, it may be a DR or written assets, or maybe it may be written receivables. It's just one and the same thing. So if your SARS income tax is under receivables, or under assets, or there is a sign that indicates that the amount is on the debit side, you will then know that your SARS is no longer a liability, it is an asset. And in your calculation, you will then have to change the sign. So if it is the beginning that has been reflected under assets, it means the, the, the beginning will change to be a minus. If it is the end that is reflected under assets, it means that the end will change to be a plus. So this is the formula that is followed. Your income tax for the year, it is your income tax for the year, plus beginning, minus end, depending. But if you know this one, which says your SARS beginning is a plus and your SARS end is a minus, if everything is under liability, it will be easy. Well, because if you see another thing, you will then simply just change the sign. So let us look at the income tax for the year as to how much is the income tax for this year. Because we want to calculate the amount, the exact amount that was paid to SARS. If you look at the information that is given here in our question two, if you go to uh, the following page, there is information A there. And that information A is an extract from the income statement. But and, and unfortunately, if you look at the, the accounts that are given there, the income tax for the year is not given. But we are given the net profit before tax and also the net profits after tax. Though, therefore, the difference between those two amounts will then be your income tax. So let us then do calculations here. Your net profit before tax is 1,777,000. 
1,777,000. And your net profit after tax is minus, it is 1,243,900. So the difference between the net profit before tax and the net profit after tax will give you your income tax for the year. So therefore, the income tax for the year is 583,100. This is our income tax for this year. Our income tax for the current financial year is 583. But remember, we want to calculate the exact amount that was paid to SARS. Because it may happen that the tax is 583,100, but you did not pay that 583,100. So let us then look at the amount we were owing SARS at the beginning and the amount owed to SARS at the end. If you go to information B, your SARS income tax account for the beginning and the end is reflected under liabilities, which then goes back to the formula I've just given you, that if everything is reflected under liabilities, your beginning will be a plus and your end will be a minus. So it means we were owing. The opening balance was a liability and the closing balance is still a liability. At the beginning of the year, we were owing SARS 69,300. So let us add the 69,300. plus 69,300. If you can just quickly take your calculator because I want you to look at something so that you may understand this calculation. If the tax for this year is 500 and 33,100. And then we were owing SARS at the beginning of the year 69,300. It means we were supposed to give what is due to SARS at the beginning of the year, which is 69,300, and also pay the income tax for the current financial year. So it means the total amount that should have been paid to SARS is 533,100 plus the amount that we were owing at the beginning, which is 69,300. So the total amount that was supposed to be paid to SARS was 602,400. But for the mere fact that there is a balance that we are still owing at the end to SARS, which is 19,800, it means we did not pay this full amount of 602,000. And hence, that is why we are following this formula that we need to subtract the amount owing at the end. If we subtract the amount that we are owing at the end, which is 19,800, then we will get the exact amount which was paid to SARS, the income tax paid. So, so it will then be this 602,400 minus the 19,800. And the total amount is 582,600. So the exact amount that was paid to SARS is 582,000. Remember, when we are doing the cash flow statement, we want to calculate the exact amount that was paid. And this amount, when it is reflected under the cash flow, it will have to be put in brackets because it is an outflow. But it, and, and remember, when you are writing within the cash flow statement and do not indicate brackets, you, it will then be marked wrong because the cash flow statement must indicate the inflow and the outflow of cash. But if, if you did not include brackets in this calculation, it doesn't matter, it may be marked correctly. But it is important that when you are putting it in the cash flow statement, it should be in brackets. So the total amount paid to SARS is 582,600. And now we are proceeding to dividends paid, according to question two. We are required to calculate dividends paid for four months. And there are two things that we pay normally for dividends. We pay for dividends due at the beginning, which is shown us for dividends at the beginning, the amount that you are owing for the previous year, which is our shareholders for dividends at the beginning, plus our interim. Because the final dividend is declared in the current year and paid in the following year. So it means, let, let's, say, let's say the business is starting this year. We are, we are starting this year to operate. It means the dividends that we can pay, because there are two dividends per annum. It is the interim dividend and the final dividend. It will mean that in the current year, we will only pay the interim dividend, because the final dividend will be declared towards the end and will be paid in the following year. And then in the following year, 
the final dividend will then be the amount owing at the beginning plus the interim. So what we are therefore saying is that if you look at our calculations here, if we look at the shareholders for dividends at the beginning, it is given in information B. Our shareholders for dividends at the beginning, the amount that we owe in shareholders at the beginning of the year was 247,500, which is the final dividend for the previous year. And therefore, we need to pay interim dividend for this year. Because the final dividend for the current year will not be paid in the current year. It will be paid in the following year. So we will only be paying the, 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 the amount owing at the beginning plus our interim dividend. But when you look at information D, unfortunately, the interim dividend was not given. The transaction was only saying an interim dividend was paid on the 31st of August 2020. And if it was paid on the 31st of August 2020, uh, we are not told whether it was 10 cents per share or that it, it, the, the transaction is just completely silent. But the final dividend, we are told that it was 20 cents per share was declared on 28th. But remember, the final dividend, we do not pay it in the current year. So you now we need to get the interim dividend. And the only clue that is given to us here is the total dividends for the year. The total dividends for the year amounted to 835,000. The total dividends for the year amounted to 835,000. These are the total dividends. These are the total dividends. And we know that the total dividends are made up of interim plus what? Plus the final dividend. And fortunately, we do have the final dividend, which is shown as shareholders for dividends at the end. The final dividend is 340,000. The final dividend is 340,000. So now, if we know that the total dividend is made up of interim plus final, so it will then be easy for us to calculate how much is the interim when the final is given. It will just simply be 835,000 835, minus the 340,000, which will then give us 495,000. Our interim is 495,000. So this calculation you can just do it here. You may decide to just add the interim of 495,000 in this calculation. Or you may just add the total dividends as given, which is 835,000, but subtract the final of 340,000. It will, you will get the same, the same answer. So 247,000, it is 247,500. 247,500 plus 835,000 minus 340,000. And the answer is 742,500. The answer is 742,500. Which is our dividend speed. And if one has worked it out separately to calculate the interim, then you can just then come here, take your opening balance plus your interim. It will give you the same amount. If you can take this 247,500 and you just add the interim only, which is 495,000. 495,000. The total answer will be 742,000, which is the same answer that we have already calculated, and this is dividends paid. So you should always remember that your calculation for dividends paid should be your shareholders for dividends at the beginning plus your interim. And should it happen that you are not given interim, you are given the total dividends, it will then be your shareholders for dividends at the beginning plus your total dividend and you will then have to subtract the final dividend because we know that the total dividend is made up of interim and final so but if you are given the interim it will be very easy to your shareholders for dividends plus your interim and then the answer will be your dividends paid and then um, the following question
under question two will be to prepare the following sections of the cash flow statement. So this one we will just uh, have a discussion on these aspects on the left hand side, the details. The cash effects of financing activities. And the cash effects of financing activities, there are things that goes under there. You will have your proceeds from the shares issued, you will have your funds used to repurchase shares, and you will have your change in loan. Remember, the cash flow statement is made up of three stages. There are three stages there. There is cash flows from operating activities. There is cash flows from investing activities. And there is also cash flows from financing activities. So the operating activities, they are straightforward because there is cash generated from operating activities. But the investing activities, what normally causes, causes a challenge to most of the learners is when they do not know the details but what is it that will go under the investing activities. So under investing activities, how does the company invest money? The company invests money by buying fixed assets. And we know that the fixed assets are your land and buildings, your vehicles, your equipment. So the company invests money by buying fixed assets. So in as much as we buy fixed assets, we sometimes be confronted with a situation whereby we need to sell one of the fixed assets. And we also invest money in the fixed deposit. So hence, we will have three things that will go under the investing activity. We will have the purchase of fixed assets, the sale of fixed assets, and you will also have investment in fixed deposit. And how is the company financed? That is cash effect of financing activities. The company is mainly financed by the shares, the issuing of shares, and secondly, when that money that we get from the sale of shares is not enough, we then take out loans. So that is why under financing activities, you will have your proceeds from shares issued, you will have your funds used to repurchase shares, and you will have your change in loans.